What is up, my Lurkana goons? Welcome back to the Lurkana goons channel. My name is Kevin, and you're watching the Friday Market Watch. We do these every Friday and Monday. We're going to go over some card prices and Lurkana news today. I'm here joined by Zach Stone, who, right when we were about to film, let me know that a bunch of new cards got revealed. Right, Zach? Check these out. What do you think of them? Well, I, I saw the Lucky Dime. That is the one simple coin that changed. Scrooge light, Scrooge's life forever. Um, this is a seven cost legendary item. Uh, it's a sapphire card, and it reads: um, tap it and pay two ink, and a, you choose a character of yours and gain lore equal to their lore. So I think this card works really well off the top of my head. Um, if it works with Strange but Special Bell, you can gain the lore that it already has if you have enough um, ink uh in your inkwell um and that's an easy way to gain five lore and possibly 10 lore in just in this one go um it, the, again the sapphire is really looking like it's going to be a late game deck um uh, as time goes on and as cards are more revealed for this set so yeah i'm i'm pretty excited for that one uh kevin what, what are some of your favorites of the ones revealed yeah, I mean, favorite or not, uh, we have a bunch to reveal, so um, we'll go over them regardless. But the, I like this one right here. It's a three inks um, ruby item. It's going to be a Sumer Sumerian Talisman. Sumerian Talisman? Uh, so the ability is during your turn, whenever one of your characters is banished in a challenge, you may draw a card. So this is really good because, one, it's inkable. Two, it's draw power for ruby. And ruby has no draw power other than like stuff like Dinner Bell and um, Queen of Hearts. And those are very slow uh, types of draw power power and this kind of does feel like a, a bit slow as well but the cool thing about it is that you can play it on your turn when your opponent hasn't been playing around it and you can run your characters into their characters and start drawing cards and you mentioned to me a little while ago this card does not exert um when you use its ability so if you can do this multiple times a turn you know so if you set up a board of some little characters um you can just banish all your little characters and draw a card for each one and uh, cards like this are, i think are pretty powerful you know what i mean um it's, it's gonna be hard to play around a card like this huh? but there's a couple more cards that revealed in the um that we have in our discord so remember to join the discord guys if you want this information as soon as it happens but we have audrey ramirez this is a five ink inkable sapphire card it's going to have a two five stat line with ward it quests for two and her ability is whenever this character quests ready one of your items so if you want to utilize the lucky dime more than once per turn you can combo it off with audrey ramirez which is cool or even if you want to let's say get some extra value out of your items you can use this new tinkerbell this this was translated earlier but this is like the first official release so we have this tinkerbell very clever fairy it's a five ink inkable uh three strength and four willpower that says whenever one of your items is banished you may put that card into your inkwell face down and exert it and you gain two lore so that's pretty cool too it's another way to get some ink you combo this off with flavor champ pop your popsicle draw two cards and you get an extra ink in your inkwell i like what sapphire is doing with that combo and then we have this prince eric four uh four cost un inkable he's gonna be a two strength two willpower that says when this character is banished you may banish chosen character and he gains two lore so this is a very aggressive card in ruby and i like that um it has that extra ability to just banish any chosen character it doesn't even have to be banished in a challenge it can be banished by any means so uh you can technically dragon fire your own prince eric and then just banish a, a, a chosen character which is cool um so you could do combos like that that's pretty nice i like this card that's pretty that's pretty strong ruby card right zach well I, i've already been thinking about a cool some cool ways for this card to go off but it is uninkable and i have to remember that ruby itself already has a lot of uninkable cards that i believe it has to play um uh, uh who knows maybe going forward some of the some of the cards that we'll we'll see as a staple will phase out um you know and i i'm pretty i'm pretty excited to see you know what uh ravensburg is starting to do with uh with into the inkland cards as, yeah uh, we have some more cards to talk about like uh the mutini the island paradise this is a uh you know two cost inkable island uh with it, it th i think it's just what do they call this they, if it's uh has Hello. one to to move it to uh, it's like a move cost i'd call it a move cost but it is it's a location yeah a location cost yeah so it Whenever a, uh, char a character is banished while here, you put that card in your inkwell face down and exert it. So this card is very, very strong. It makes 
all your characters Gramatalas. And I can see this card being utilized quite well in the Popsicle deck um, with the new cards revealed just now, um, now that I think about it. But um, locations are really going to change the game, Kevin. What are your thoughts on locations? Yeah, I'm super excited. I'm thinking that um, the, ne the necessity for locations in the meta might make Into the Ink Lens a very sought after set. Um, you know, we're seeing the prices for the first chapter jump back up. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of first chapter cards are necessary in the meta right now, as well as them being collectible. Um, and I think that um, with the addition to locations, it'll probably make um, the locations uh, a pretty important part of the meta too. Should you pay $3 for this uncommon location though? Maybe not. I don't think you need to pay um, the, the pre-order prices for these because the lowest listings are going to be three to five dollars so you know the, the, a lot of the uncommons when the cards come out end up being less than a dollar and we don't know what the meta is going to be like so um this location might be a little slow you know we've seen some other locations come out though that might even be better than this one like the sorcerer's tower right here by uh wondrous workplace and one thing that's cool about this location is that um it's gonna have a, a seven willpower and a two cost um location uh cost basically uh but it doesn't have any extra lore that you gain off of it so if you didn't know the locations have lore on them and for example this montanui one gives you one lore passively at the start of your turn during the set, uh, ready set phase um, and this sorcerer's tower does not have any passive lore so not every location is going to be giving um, the players lore passively and I think at first a lot of us thought oh these locations are going to speed up the game you know but there's strategic locations like this um, like this uh, broom <laughs> style location and it says your character's named magic broom may move here for free so you don't have to pay that move cost and then the extra ability is that characters um, here gain one plus lore so that's pretty good in general it's like an eye of the fates for your characters but this is going to be for amethyst um i think and it's an inkable card so um in general this is going to uh, add an extra lore to your character so if you're already playing a deck that plays goats or something maybe arthur's maybe even a, an aggressive amethyst style deck with brooms you'll be able to start questing for two so you know we are starting to see some new strategies um with into the ink lands we have 99 puppies as well these are not locations but um some new action cards that are going to utilize uh your board this one says um when one of your characters quests this turn gain a lore so um, you play it once and for the rest of the turn you, you gain an extra lore anytime anybody quests so yeah into the ink lands really pushing the boundaries especially after introducing the ability to play 99 copies of the Dalmatian in your deck you know what I mean um, we have a way to destroy locations too do you like this card Zach um, and then along came Zeus uh, this is gonna be able to deal five damage to any chosen character or location this card is a very interesting card being a four cost song as we know Sebastian is a singer for He's been talked about a lot as far as, you know, co comboing this card off with it. Um, but being the only card that deals damage to locations outside of uh, Rush characters, um, I see this being very, um, very important um, early on into the Inklands uh, meta, for sure. Um, another card that I think would be um, quite useful along with this is the... Um, it, it's the one that puts the uh or that let, lets you uh draw the card i think it's the ursula so uh you, you get to have more songs and there might be some ways for you to get some value out of that playing later into the game because the locations do i i, I think they're going to just let the game go on a lot longer than it should be do you think this is a 12 dollar 12 dollar rare absolutely not no we always suggest never to buy the pre-orders you know, <laughs> wait till the cards are released wait till the set's out um pre-orders on tcg player are more for peace in mind um but it's not worth it it I, it never it never is for for early card games right they even have more space goo here on the tcg player it's not available there's no listings but they have the they have it up here ready to go you know um and if you don't know what morph is this card was just announced yesterday it's going to be a two cost emerald card it's inkable and it says um you may play any character with shift on this character as if this character had any name this card has been talked about a lot um during the reveal yesterday before the reveal <laughs> if you know what i mean um it has one willpower two strength and basically lets you shift any character on top of it um like bell of uh, hidden archer sad beast um etc uh, etc et and if you know about it's going to be a two cost character so you can play it in the beginning of your game and if it survives you can start shifting cards like aladdin and big cindy as well for way cheaper than what you normally would um card might break the meta or it might not how, how do you feel about morph bro I, I need to get your opinion zach uh well morph is already being talked about a lot because of the um capabilities with the with the hidden archer bell as well 
uh, and and Sad Beast is just a is a, also a shift card. So being able to play those characters early on, um, I think can really change uh, Emerald Steel and how how that deck uh, may be played. Um, people do forget how uh, about Bell, and not not to say she was uh, you know overhyped in the beginning because she was, but I always felt like once you could shift her on turn uh, turn three. She'll, she'll have a place in this world and um yeah M morph might be able to do it um and, <laughs> right. and as well into the inklands is a is a set that is uh highly anticipated to change the game as the rise of the floodborne did to the game uh but the pre-orders on tcg player for the boxes are you know i would say regulated to about 150 160 dollars um some sold for a little less uh who knows how much their shipping costs were However, you do see um, a lot of uh, a lot of stores have multiple listings at one hundred and sixty dollars. Kevin, I, I mean, we still say not to buy the pre-orders right away, but these seem to be the same prices mm -hmm. that stores are offering. Yeah, this is very close to MSRP, and I think this is almost as good as it gets, in my opinion, for like a pre-order. Um, I don't, I don't. Again, like I just said, I think the set's gonna probably make a big, make a decent impact in the meta. Um, in general, I think booster boxes have a collector's value. Um, if you just want to buy a booster box, keep it sealed forever. I think that's always, you know, a, a decent a collectible. Um, so booster boxes as a pre-order, and you're never gonna find like a sealed booster box at like a Walmart, at least not out here in like Southern California. Uh, you know what I mean? Usually the booster boxes are uh, mainly for LGS locations, and if you just can't get one or if you're not really near an lgs which, which i know some of us are not uh maybe you might want to do these pre-orders because quite frankly this is a good price it's close to msrp and uh, i know that we paid a lot for first chapter and rise of the floodborne so when i see these prices for a pre-order i'm i'm considering it <laughs> you know personally so um not to say you guys should do it not to say you guys shouldn't but you know uh, make the decisions uh, up to up to your guys' own uh, knowledge that you feel comfortable with but um you know this could go up it could go down the way the first chapter booster boxes have been moving because the first chapter booster boxes they bounce off msrp for like two weeks um a couple months ago when the reprints came out and since then they haven't seen msrp since in fact they've still been kind of going up we did see a couple sell for more than 200 dollars on monday we were talking about it and they did fall a little bit but today we're still seeing listings for around that 199 mark we have a cash connection for 195 dollars plus eight dollars shipping so more than 200 dollars is still what you're paying for the rise of the floodworm booster box which is more than it was um last week last week it was sitting at 170 and then before it was at msrp so, you know, these could just keep moving up and down and ink lands could be just as expensive or just as inexpensive. So, um, you know, pre-orders at your own risk in terms of the booster boxes, maybe stay away from the singles, though. And a lot of the other um, sealed products for pre-orders don't seem um, like too worth it. But I think the booster box price might be worth it. But um, speaking of first chapter, all these enchanted, man, these enchanted have been moving. And um, and Zach, when I mentioned last on Monday um, what I felt about the enchanted movement, um, some people disagreed, <laughs> you know. Uh, some people said that this was completely organic. This is just the market. This is a demand. Um, and, uh, you know, some people also did agree. Some some people even said these takes were cold. But, um, you know, what none of us expected was that um, Lurkana official, the official uh, Lurkana account on Discord actually responded to some of our messages. So people were messaging um, the Lurkana on Discord and Twitter, basically asking, are you guys going to reprint the first chapter or not? <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, at some point, um, the uh, Lurkana people's on a discord uh, responded and i'm gonna go ahead and read the response real quick so team lurkana said we've not made any announcements regarding additional reprints if we have information to share it will be in an announcement so then somebody said thanks i'll read that as chapter one is currently done for now question mark and someone else from lurkana responded it isn't one way or another just that we would make an announcement so like i said in the last video my goons i, I am not gonna believe any rumors or any hearsay or i'm not gonna put my money down on this concept of chapter one is not gonna get reprinted anymore because they straight up just said we can we can reprint it if we want to and we will announce it if we are going to but if anything changes they will announce it they haven't announced anything so that just it means not one way or the other you know so i'm not going to go around telling people um that uh, you know that, that this is this is the last time chapter one's ever going to get reprinted because that is just straight up rumors and hearsay uh zach how do you feel about this in general i personally think that the enchanted you know price uh increase has had a little bit of like you know less authenticity than i than i firm than i really believe it is 
Um, however, you know, with cards selling at what they're selling at, that is just the reaction of the market and how people, you know, look at their, uh, you know, look at these prices and, and believe that they could only get to go higher. Um, but there is never a, uh, any source of information that clearly says anything. Ravensburg has, you know, said things in the past, but have followed through with what they've said and their promises. So I don't believe there's any reason that they're implying that it's not being printed anymore based on what they're saying. Um, I, th I think it's very, very shocking that somebody just goes and takes what they say out of context and, you know, projects onto what they think that they mean is, you know, oh, it's not a, it's not in print anymore, which I think is insane. Yeah, so it's kind of irresponsible take that for what you guys want. Yeah, it's it's not fair. I don't think that that's what you should be doing. And there's a lot of people saying that they have it from their source. And and look, there there there's not a there, there's not a distributor that I haven't spoke to that hasn't said they can't place the order and they can't they can't order more. Um, that that is that is definitely able to happen right now. Right. And if there is an agenda and an ulterior motive. Um, you know, we'll come to find out. But the enchanted prices are up there, as well as the surfer stitch. These these prices are well above three hundred uh, for for this card. And um, I mean, St stitch has been a favorite for a lot of people that I know that don't even play this game. They're just collecting all the stitches that they can get. Yeah, um, I forgot to mention the price for Elsa. Uh, the listings, uh, lowest listing for Elsa right now, by the way, is going to be six hundred and fifty dollars by TCG Battleground, and a bunch of the Elsas were selling for that six hundred dollar mark, by the way. And it's looking like Stitch is the same thing, bro. Like Stitch has just been moving um, up and down as well, keeping its price above that three hundred dollar mark. A bunch were selling for, um, let's see, three hundred, two seventy five, two seventy nine. Uh, since the last market watch, all of the ones that were in that two hundred dollar range have basically sold out, and now the lowest verified is going to be 339 by kings of cardboard now you guys can go through a non-verified seller and get them for uh, more than 300 dollars. but in general this is a good card i i don't know if 300 if it's a 300 dollars card right now maybe in the future it, stitch is definitely like a fan favorite and um i think the enchanted rare is awesome it's a meta card as well but man it, the pride the, the fact that this this has been constantly moving is, is the red flag for me it's the fact that the fail the sales haven't stopped since monday from monday to friday you know what i mean um so it, it, again like it just seems like if they do uh, decide to print more this is not going to be the price for a while and in general um it looks like there's still a lot of listings so um a lot more listings keep coming into the market um let's look at some other ones maui uh this one was the enchanted that was listed for like 250 dollars on monday when we looked at it and i even said maybe don't pay 250 for that maui right because all the ones that sold for less than 200 had sold out um somebody did buy one for 222 but after that look at it the listings went lower and lower 213 199 so um there's there's just more and more listings for these cards getting put on the market especially now that there's a lot of hype behind them so uh you know g give it a little give it a sec before you make that 250 dollars purchase because you could even save like 30 bucks and get it by from games and stuff for 213 dollars now so instead of spending 250 on monday could have waited till friday and spent 215 and you know i th i think the card might even go lower i think the card might go a little bit lower uh tinkerbell giant fairy awesome enchanted rare uh but it has been also bouncing off um these 250 dollar marks um one sold for 150 today um a couple sold for 220 230 um and but on monday and tuesday a bunch were selling for 280 so that hype was really real on monday man and, and uh, you know, it's it, 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 the hype has been calming down a little bit, um, and I think it might even keep coming down um, a, a, as time goes on. Because uh, again, I get you're right. Like I, I still, I still see first chapter being posted on the shelves of like targets. You know, I see the post on Facebook, and um, again, I haven't really had any issues um, finding uh, first chapter booster um, boxes like too crazy. You know, um, we we got some like two weeks ago. Um, but uh, let's see who else. Simba, uh, the Simba returned King alternate arts first chapter enchanted rare um these were selling for these were listed for 300 dollars on monday and that was one that i really said not to not to get at 300 and i'm glad nobody bought it at 300 dollars because um they were only selling for around 205 204 um and today one sold for 141 so i think i you know there's a bunch of listings now i think on monday there was less than 10 maybe around that now there's 21 listings so um now the lowest verified is 205 by master card ball i don't know what do you think zach should people pay 205 for this simba enchanted rare or do you think now that now that there's 21 listings this is still going to come down 
well, th it's like, you know, people that have these enchanted see these prices go up and say, hey, I want to sell mine too. Oh, what's it selling for 300? You know what? Take mine for 280. Oh, wait, one's at 280? Take mine for 250. Wait, you have it for 250? Take mine at 220 and 200. And how low can we go? Mm -hmm. I, I, I've seen this before. And I said it, I said it when it first happened. I said, wow, this is good for the people that, you know, ha had them when they're cheap. If they sell them, good for them. If they think it's going to go up, that's on them. And we're seeing the bottoming out already. It, it's been less than a week and we're seeing the bottoming out. Yeah. Why? Everyone sees the prices and they want to sell theirs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that exists. I just know that a lot of people didn't want to get rid of them when they were so low. Yeah. I, I don't I I don't know why there's a thought behind the cards staying and staying their price prices when they're so high. Um, it, it's it's not going to happen. So by all means, those that can eat should eat. Yeah, yeah, man. If you want to get rid of it at these prices, you definitely should, in my opinion. Um, Aurora Dream Guardian. This one is pretty hyped right now still. Um, today, a bunch were selling for more than $200. Lois Verified is going to be Card Father Games for $225. This is a cool one because it is a princess, so it does have that waifu tax. So I will admit that um, when it was less than $100, I definitely thought that was too cheap. Um, but should you be paying more than $200? I don't know. Maybe not. Um, maybe wait until this one comes down to that less than $200 mark again. Cinderella Bottom Sensation. This is one that um, I personally wanted to see go over 300 obviously because i i own one but um you know like i like i said like i thought um i didn't think it was gonna uh go over 300 it bounced off so uh lowest verified um we're gonna have today is going to be from this listing by by nat 20 games gg shout out them i know they host lorcana events too I, we've covered them before in the past but they have one for 289.95 and then we have some non-verified listings for that 250 to 280 dollar range so close to 300 but it's not over 300 yet okay um which is cool to see sisu a divine water dragon some of the um other rise of the floodborne enchanters have been going up as well um sisu being one of them that is no longer less than 100 bucks which is cool so we have a confirmed sale for 120 dollars today now the lowest verified listing is going to be 124 dollars which is awesome to see and then over the week a bunch were selling for more than 100 bucks yesterday 121 140 145 so um your rise of the floodborne enchanted rares are slowly starting to pick up in price as well i again like i i feel like um, when the enchanters were less than a hundred dollars, I don't know about you, Zach, but I felt that was undervalued. Like regardless of how many there are, the enchanted rares are just nice and they're hard to find and cool. And I feel like a hundred bucks is like, is like more than a fair for like the cheapest one for like an Amari or like a Pete. You know what I mean? Um, I like Pete more than Amari actually, so I'm surprised Pete is still the cheapest one. But even cards like Pete and Amari, they're all going up to almost um that one hundred dollar range. Um, and then we have Arthur to end it off, which one has which has been kind of picking up a lot um in in sales and price as well. This was less than a hundred bucks, and now the Lowest verified is 142 by Trade Routes MTG, and a bunch were selling for that $140 range. You know what I mean? Um, these also might be a little inflated, so may maybe this might come back down to that $100 range. But you know, uh, 130 to 140 is probably what you're gonna pay for an Enchanted Arthur to a day, right, Zach Stone? Yeah, the Enchanted Arthur is definitely seeing an uptick, and this is one of the few uh, Rise of the Floodborne cards enchanteds that have gone up so we decided that we want to have another enchanted tournament so stay tuned those that are local goons in our long beach southern california area we will have another enchanted tournament so stay tuned to that announcement later on in the week another card and you know we we've talked about a lot of enchanteds i know the enchanted market's gone up and 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 we we may be ourselves tired of seeing them as well so let's move on to some legendaries uh a bell strange but special is you know a 25 dollar normal uh version kevin i i think this card has gone from like 12 to 15 to 18 to 20 now 25 and i i think with the announced cards that we saw wh where do you think this card goes I mean, in general, this card is just great. Um, it's one of the few cards that in Lorcana that can consistently quest for five. <laughs> you know, um, I know Alice tries to do a similar thing that Bell does, but it just doesn't get you there. Um, there's some like cheesy combos with Alice that are cool, but it, um, the Bell it just adds so much pressure in the late game in Sapphire decks and Sapphire Steel. Even last format, um, people were playing Bell in like certain Sapphire decks, and um, the the ability to the ability to be able to um, set up two Bell and get half way 
through the game with your win condition is, is crazy and especially with that new item uh, that you just pointed out um you're able to uh, gain the lore of bell without even questing her so that's a pretty cool interaction i think that bell is probably going to be one of the staples in sapphire the way we see rapunzel as a staple in amber where it might be formats where you don't need for rapunzel but in general you're probably always going to want rapunzel in an amber deck because of its utility right so uh bell just has that extra effect too that lets you ink extra cards from your hand you know so that's an extra cherry on top which does matter and and comes up a lot in your ramp um in, in the early game so um, awesome card really cool to see that the, they're selling for around 25 dollars because i did think it was undervalued when they were less than 20 bucks um and even the foils have been selling consistently for close to 40 dollars this week which is cool to see you know, somebody bought a cold foil for 42 and another person um oh, and then we're gonna go check out the cold foil listings real quick because if the let's see how they're looking today yeah, Lois Verified is going to be 42 as well by Kingsway Collects. So that's pretty cool to see. Um, some other Sapphire cards that are obviously popping might be staples in the meta. It's like Hades Infernal Schemer. Um, always uh, good to see Hades more than $20. It's a very awesome legendary. And this one has been going up in price as well. Um, in general, I think you need Hades in most Sapphire decks. So uh, it's still kind of low right now. And it'll probably be harder and harder as time goes on to find near mint Hades. So if you do want to find them, I think $20 is a more than reasonable price price for hades and we do have a last sale for cold foils uh for a 40 dollar cold foil hades so that's pretty cool to see and then uh bell hidden archer is another bell um that is might be undervalued right zach well ten dollars has been its price for a long time this card has started at its high of around what 70 80 dollar pre-sale down to 40 and you know not leaving ten dollar price range and i don't think it has any reason to go any lower if anything this is a good time to pick up your bells now that morph is uh closer to its uh official release and being able to shift this character does allow early questing and early pressure um if you're not playing steel you you don't have easy ways to remove this immediately without challenging it so keep in mind that um, steel is the only uh, color that they can remove um, the hidden archer bell, um, but who knows? There it might be some merit to um, to playing the uh, the Maui location and giving this uh ward and resist yeah <laughs> yeah that's kind of wild right giving it ward and resist would be would be really impactful um and also i think that we never know if we get more removal um in in into the ink land so the card could just be worthless but i think this card's actually really good if you combo it off with morph uh, uh, so some of the cold foil listings have been going up in price as well by the way so um, lois verified uh, is going to be 18 dollars with a dollar shipping by his Wolinski family but after that we start hitting 20 dollars with two dollars shipping and 22 dollars so the cold foils for this card are slowly going up so i think there are some people who kind of got you know caught, caught what's happening with morph and bell combos and they're making some some purchases on this card because there is a lot of sales movement as of yesterday and today for this card um speaking of sales movement mickey mouse brave little taylor seeing a lot of sales movement in the foil range right zach stone there's a couple that have been selling for more than 40 dollars as of recently check this out this is pretty cool to see i always mentioned that brave little taylor is a um is a collectible in, in my opinion uh, having this as a foil is just really hard to find um, and having it mint as a foil is hard to find now the lowest verified for the foils is going to be by no limit gaming for 54 dollars man we looked at this i think last week and they were in the 40 dollar range and i saw that they were selling um so to see that it's getting close to 60 dollars for this mickey mouse foil that's pretty rad man what do you think is it just because mickey mouse is mickey mouse <laughs> probably right because uh, last week they, um earlier in the week they were selling uh, for around 50 to 40 and today 56 52 dollars with 99 cents is the most recent sale yeah this this character is a um you know a novelty it's uh collectability ranges far it's one of the it was one of the first um you know workana cards given out during the d23 expo and I, I do know that a lot of um, Disney fans and Mickey Mouse fans like to have, a, you know, copies of this card um, and, and foil versions are, the, you know, the most sought after. I would say that they look the best. They're like the shine. They're, they're the they're the foils and you can't go. You can't get a rarity higher than the foil versions of a card in this game yet. Until they release an enchanted uh, Brave Little Taylor, which could be a possibility with the 
um, challenges in the World Championship. I would love to see that the World Champion prize card is an Enchanted Brave Mickey Taylor. Dude, that'd, that'd be, be crazy. <laughs> yeah, that'd be insane. However, um, this is the more the highest sought after ones you can get mm -hmm. uh, next to the D23 Expo First Edition. So, um, this this being the cover card of the first chapter set booster box as well. Um, definitely has definitely deserving of its high price tag. This card used to be a hundred dollars as a foil. I do remember it being very, very expensive. Wow, yeah, you know, you're right. Out the gate, it was bouncing off that $99 range, man. Very interesting to see. So, remember, if you have a foil Mickey Mouse Brave Little Taylor, maybe consider holding on to it, but make sure you get your value out of it if you are getting rid of it. Um, some more cards to go over Beast Tragic Hero has been slowly going down a little bit in price, a bunch still selling for that $49 to $50 range, but we have some non verified listings today for $45. Games and stuff has it for $45 with a dollar shipping. So, if you didn't pay $50 earlier in the week, you can get them for a little bit less right now, but the foils, my goodness, the foils are still moving at extraordinary prices we have a lowest verified by thor's toy box for 68.66 then we have collectibles by mc for 72.98 so well, it's like a 70 dollar foil beast tragic heroes is what that's looking like and that's always pretty cool to see because foils are the way to go man in this in this game and then another some more cards to go over from into from um legend from the legendary section of lorcana maleficent monsters dragon the lowest verified for maleficent monsters dragon today is going to be by games and stuff for 35 dollars with the dollar shipping so they have kind of come down a little bit they were like 40 bucks uh earlier in the week and uh last uh, friday when we looked at it and now they're closer to 35 dollars um and look at it uh, we're seeing more listings get listed for these cards so for the beast had like 80 some listings if i'm not mistaken um yeah the beast had let's see beast tragic hero had 13 listings that's for the foil <laughs> beast tragic hero for the non-foil had a 69 listings uh today which is pretty cool to see and the maleficent monsters dragon for the non-foil is going to have 88 listings so there's plenty of listings to go around and i'm starting to see people not even play maleficent monsters dragon in their ruby amethyst deck anymore or even in their um ruby amber mufasa decks anymore so um i'm slowly starting to think that people are um uh saying that this card isn't as good as they thought it was i've heard it I I've heard that said i think the card is great but do you need four in your decks maybe not maybe you can get away with only playing two i've seen people get away with not playing it at all check out our other videos we've done a tournament of breakdowns where first place second place is ruby amethyst is not playing maleficent monsters dragon in their deck so not necessarily needed as we thought so the price might go down for that one a little bit or puns will gifted with healing like i was saying earlier was is a awesome staple to have in your deck uh, these are still selling for more than about 30 to 40 dollars we have a lowest verified by gulf coast hobby for 39.95 and the foils for these were selling for dang near a hundred dollars at one point even more today you're going to be paying 69.99 by the pokey bar for a near mint cold foil rapunzel so 70 dollars also for this one uh, is what we're seeing very close to the beast tragic hero same thing with maleficent monsters dragon by the way the foils for these are selling for around 70 dollars as well so we have a near mint sale today for 71.75 so the best legendaries in larkana if you have them in foils they're all going to be 70 dollars and brave little taylor mickey is going to be the next one with like 50 60 bucks right um fairy godmother is a legendary that i want to mention because i think this card is pretty cheap this card gets better with morph you can use morph to uh, you know um shift into your fairy godmother i think that's kind of cool the non-verified is gonna i'm sorry the non-foil is gonna be 575 and the foils for this card are only gonna be about 10 bucks so i like this card too i think it has some cool collectability i just i just think it's cool um so 10 bucks for a um, fairy godmother which i think might be a, a bit of a come up don't you think zach stone the foil of fairy godmother being you know twelve dollars might be criminal Fo uh, foil legendaries being that cheap is definitely something to think about i i've noticed a lot of cards that are at this price range don't say this price range um and i i actually just realized that it's a shift too so if they ever just make a one drop fairy godmother this will be able to be played on turn two and it's really um, good. Be able to quest and give her give her the ability for the the early um, buff in your challenger. I, I think having Morph and then turn three Fairy Godmother is good. I think even if you go turn four, you can play Morph turn four and Fairy Godmother on top of Morph on turn four. I think that's good. You know what I mean? Getting playing a five cost character on turn four means you can sing uh, Fairy. You can you can sing Whole New World on turn five. You know what I mean? Um, so there's a couple app, there's a couple uh, decent applications I think with this card. So I I, I want if I find them in, in foil, I want to pick them up myself. Um, that's pretty cool. Lady Tremaine. Let's get on to some supers. Lady Tremaine uh, bouncing off that six dollar mark. The lowest verified is going to be six thirty. 
3 by Norwest Cards. Earlier, these were selling for about $5 for the near mints, and I think that's the lowest you were going to see them. So um, if you didn't get your Lady Chimains for $5, I don't think they're ever going to be $5 ever again, <laughs> or maybe not for a while, because um, this card for sure should be like close to a $10 card the way Tinkerbell Giant Fairy is, in my opinion. Whole new world, seeing a lot of sales activity. Everyone is shifting to playing Steel decks, and Sapphire Steel is one of the bigger, is one of the more popular decks I'm seeing played a lot on Pixelborn and at my locals, uh, and it's showing in the sales movement as well. A bunch of sales happening for this card in that seven to nine dollar range. This card used to be less than five bucks at some point. Now it's getting close to ten dollars. So now a bunch of non-verified sellers. If you want to um, pick them up for seven to eight dollars, but going by the lowest verified, we have King Zog's cards, nine dollars, eight ninety five basically, but nine dollars for whole new world slowly going up to that ten dollar range cogsworth is another super we can mention real quick this one is no longer a dollar card uh, but the foils and the non-foils have been getting close to the same prices um, a lot of foils have been selling for around five to six dollars if you want a non-foil cogsworth you can pick it up today for 340 with a dollar shipping by gotcha irl so now the non-foils are getting close to five bucks right so you're almost five bucks but and if you want to get the foils well crispy's emporium has it for 549 with a dollar shipping so why not just get the foils for a dollar more my goons this is just one of the cards you see get the foils instead of the non-foils because you're basically paying the same price and we know that either the non-foils are going to dip or the foils are going to maintain that price so i think i think you might as well get the foils on those be prepared is a rare that is bouncing off ten dollars again wow yeah so if you didn't get these when they weren't ten dollars you're probably paying ten dollars now gravity tabletops games has it for 877 gets magic has it for 823 with a dollar shipping so nine dollars basically ten dollars for this be prepared and the foils have been moving as well selling for around thirteen dollars which is pretty cool that's the market price for the foils and maui hero to all is the last rare we want to talk about today this dude is selling for uh nine to ten dollars on the foils and non-foils plenty of are still selling for more than five dollars so you're going to be paying around six to seven dollars for your maui's right so the um, market is slowly um kind of picking back up oh we also have fishbone quills zach tell me about fishbone quill what's going on with this card man five dollars i mean this card has hit its bottom out at two to three i think eventually even being like less than two dollars for a week or two. Oh yeah this card's a five dollar card and rising and this card is as we we can tell um readying your items is going to be the trend Ooh. going forward for sapphire Ooh. so multiple cards ramping up very fast i i can see that this card just getting better and better cold foils there's very little listings and they're starting to get up to almost near nine ten dollar mark um, just in the first page, you see it at 8 to 10. So that's just in the first page of listings. Um, there's only two pages total. Uh, I, I like to always consider the amount of listings that are available and, and whenever I'm like getting rid of stuff. And fish foil fishbone quills look like they're harder and harder to uh, get out of you know five dollar price yep and i mentioned fishbone quill last week too because i saw that it was going up and i mentioned how the foil price was basically the same as the non-foil price right here for it was the market price was 460 for the foil and the non-foil was market price was also 460 so uh again you just get the foils guys it makes more sense because now they're basically double for the foil and the non-foils kind of fell a little bit but this card is amazing and sapphire obviously and like you said it just gets better now that we know that we can ready back our items so imagine using the same fishbowl quill more than once and then refilling your hand with whole new world oh it's just so good so you know um it's pr pretty it's looking pretty good for sapphire in the meadow you know we'll see what happens but until we see what happens in, into the ink lands we want to say thank you for watching we want to say be sure to like comment and subscribe if you are a lurkana goon and remember to stay tuned to lurkana goons right zach stone any any last words for us yeah guys you know if you guys are following us on our twitter pages on our instagrams you know we always appreciate your support from all our socials we are on tiktok as well so make sure to follow us there if you are a TikTok user and stay tuned to Lorcana Goons. Until next time, guys. Thank you.